I can't even begin to imagine how tough it is to try and follow in your father's footsteps when it comes to sports. Like, I remember my favorite baseball player of all time, Ken Griffey Jr. His dad, Ken Griffey Sr., was a good Major League Baseball player for a long time. Had a nice, long career, part of the Big Red Machine in Cincinnati in the mid-70s. That's a lot of pressure, like, you're the kid, you're junior. So not only is he trying to follow in his dad's footsteps, he's also carrying his dad's name. And then Ken Griffey Jr. becomes Ken Griffey Jr. He's the biggest star in the game for almost a decade. You know, you look at the Manning boys, like Archie was a solid quarterback during his career in New Orleans, but Peyton and Eli both came into the NFL, you know, not carrying his same first name, but certainly carrying his last name. And that's a lot of pressure and burden of expectations to live up to. And they both met and exceeded those. On the flip side, you've got somebody like a Bronny James, who trends worldwide at all of like 15 years of age, because he's sitting there like a ding-dong, like a young kid would do. Do you imagine what we would have done if we had social media and the internet back when 20, 25 years ago when we were kids? He's sitting there <laughs> lighting up a blunt, smoking it on Instagram. You got the whole world tweeting about it. You're trending worldwide on Twitter because everybody's talking about how your dad's going to leave the bubble of the NBA playoffs to come and whoop your ass. And he's following his dad's footsteps trying to play basketball at the highest level some days. That's a tough thing. So I get sometimes when it comes to the WWE that there's this dynamic of that name matters and it resonates and it creates an opportunity, gets a foot in the door for some of these guys and gals. And it does. It most absolutely certainly does. But then sometimes that burden, depending on who it is, depending upon the situation, depending on who their famous mom or dad was, can be too much to overcome, that burden can be too much to bear, and it could potentially overwhelm them and cripple them. And I totally, totally understand that. But, this Braun Breaker shit? Look, I'm with the thought of someday at a WrestleMania. I get the thought of 70, 80,000 people chanting, Bron's gonna break you. Like, break him off. Like, you could do some of those chants and they would work and da 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 da. Well, his name is fucking stupid. And sometimes you say, well, what's in a name? And it's about what you do with it. And sometimes that's true. But sometimes you look at a name and you just say, that is the absolute drizzling shits. Perfect example of that Husky Harris. How in the hell was the Rotunda kid ever going to get over? Coming from that legacy of the Rotunda lineage of professional wrestling. And you're sitting there calling him Husky Harris. It took a total character change of becoming Bray Wyatt for him to get over, for him to actually work at the main roster WWE level. Another even better example, Michael McGillicuddy. He's the grandson of Larry the Axe Henning. The son of Mr. Perfect Kurt Henning. This dude is third fucking generation. Yet, you decided to start him off by calling him Michael McGillicuddy. Doomed from the fucking beginning. That automatically sounds like a name that will never draw money. That automatically sounds like a name that never had a chance. On a guy who never had a chance. And all the while you're looking and you're saying, why in the hell wouldn't you want to associate him with a lineage that comes from two generations of wrestlers that were successful in the industry, that drew money? Why wouldn't you want to associate him with that name similar to what you do did with a Randy Orton? He's third generation. You know his daddy, Ace Cowboy Bob Orton. You didn't sit there and change his name to Roderick Stevens or some shit like that. You let him be Randy Orton because you could play off of that family lineage to kind of put him in the place and the prop of the position of like, this is one of our future guys. That makes sense. Don't overthink this shit sometimes. And you think about Rey Mysterio Jr. If he was coming up through WWE developmental now, 
they probably call him Roger Lopez. You notice how it just doesn't have the same fucking resonance? The name can matter. And that's what I really don't get here when it comes to Braun Baker. Breaker. See, I almost said Baker. That's how fucking stupid this name is. Why reinvent the wheel when you don't have to? Why make shit more difficult for a guy that everybody can clearly see has some real star potential? That crap I said at the earlier part of this video about the name and some of the chants you could do, that's all fine and good, but that is me putting a positive spin as much as I can, which is very little, on a really, really stupid, stupid decision and situation. He's the son of Rick Steiner. The nephew of Scott Steiner. Even if you don't want to be associated with Scott Steiner, I didn't think there was anything wrong with him being associated with Rick Steiner. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. Who the fuck knows anymore? But he looks like his daddy and a little bit of Scott. He sounds damn near like a dead ringer for Scott. You got people already talking about how you want him to talk about his peaks and his freaks. Wants him to give math lessons and all this other crap. And oh, by the way, you just saw him bust out on NXT this week. The freaking Steiner recliner. So he looks like a combination of two Steiners. Descends from one. Is related to another one that he happens to freaking sound like. Look like. And then he's using one of the signature moves of his uncle. Everybody knows what the hell that move is. Everybody knows who the hell he's related to. Yet for some goddamn reason, instead of taking this kid and saying, we have big ideas for him. We have a big vision for him. We see a big future for him. We see a future main event opponent at big four pay-per-views for guys like Roman Reigns and Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre and Big E, which by the way, is exactly the type of fucking philosophy that you should be looking at with these guys in your developmental territory like NXT. Imagine how much better that works. Imagine how much more that makes sense if you associate the freaking Steiner name to it. What the hell are you doing, WWE? This shit doesn't have to be that hard. Just imagine you bring up this young man and you say it's Bronson Steiner. You can still own the intellectual property. You can still own the rights to the name. But that's not his f full last name. It's Reich Steiner. So you could call him Bronson Steiner and talk about how he's second generation. Talk about how he's Rick Steiner's son. You can talk about Rick Steiner and his legacy. You can talk about him having the reputation of being a legit tough guy and a badass and all the things that he did as a tag team wrestler and so on and so forth and say that as cool and great as Rick Steiner was, his son has even more potential. He's even better. You can get into a family lineage shit between him and Roman Reigns that tells a fantastic fucking story. It doesn't work the same when his goddamn name is Braun Breaker with two K's, mind you. Surprised he didn't throw a third K in there just for Vince's shits and niggles. Well, oh, that's such good shit. You're depriving a guy, not like in the case of a Joe Hennig, where you're saying he needed that name in order to have a chance, which he did. He absolutely did. You know, because Michael McGillicuddy was a death sentence. Curtis Axel was the best type of spin on a stupid idea. I'm going to take and hodgepodge his grandpa and daddy's name, put them together, and that's what we get. Instead of just calling him Joe fucking Henning. Like, why in the hell would you want to do that? But in this case, you got somebody that everybody can see has clear potential. You see a guy that has money written all over him. He's grown up in the business. He clearly has an aptitude, a natural talent for the business. Putting that name and attaching it to him is another way to validate him and signify 
that this guy is a big part of the future of your damn business. Bronson Steiner, Bron Steiner. Now, as I say, Bron Steiner sounds a lot like Bron Strowman. Maybe I get it. No, I fucking don't. Bronson Steiner. There is nothing wrong with that name. And God damn it. Like that helps take that kid and his profile to another, another level entirely. Just because you never utilize the Steiners to their full potential in WWF Vince, in WWE Vince, doesn't mean that you need to do that with the second generation kid. This is the type of guy you should be throwing every possible fucking thing you can in the kitchen sink at him in order to ensure that he gets over to the type of level that he certainly flashes the potential to be able to do. And you don't do that by calling him goddamn Braun Breaker. The hell is wrong with you? He looks like a Steiner. He acts like a Steiner. He walks like a Steiner. He talks like a Steiner. He flexes like a Steiner. He wrestles like a Steiner. He freaks, I'm sure, like a Steiner. He uses the Steiner recliner. For God's sakes, WWE, wake the hell up and call this kid Bronson Steiner. Don't make shit harder than it needs to be. You've got a potential opportunity here for a golden goose. Don't let it slip through your head grabs because you want to get too cute and you want to overthink it. Just call him a Steiner!